کتاب انگری بهشت سانی به زنده رودش سلامی ز چشم ما رسانی Of us who love to travel, perhaps Isfahan is a familiar name. Isfahan is a stunning and romantic city located in central Iran. It sits majestically on both the east-west and the north-south trade routes, which traverse the country. The city is famous for its astonishing gardens and architecture, as it combines natural elements with man-made components to create a unique artistic achievement that reflects the heights of art. philosophy and religious concepts. I am Sahar Aghju and you're watching Aperture. Isfahan was once one of the largest cities in the world. It flourished from 1050 to 1722, particularly in the 16th century under the Safavid dynasty, when it became the capital of Persia for the second time in its history. Even today, Isfahan retains much of its past glory. This truly magnificent city is renowned both domestically and internationally for its many beautiful boulevards, covered bridges, splendid palaces, grand mosques, and impressive minarets. This has led to the Persian proverb, Isfahan Nisve Jahan, which means Isfahan is half of the world. Stay with us today on Aperture as we follow a young American tourist who discovers the splendors of Isfahan. When the wind blows, the people of Varzane await new signs of the ancient city to appear. An old city buried under the sand hills in the western corners of the Gavhuni Lagoon. They say under these flowing sands there lays a buried city, a city mentioned in ancient writings, a city which re-emerges again when the wind blows, the city of Saba. Varzane is a suburb of Bon Rude in Isfahan province, near the Gavhuni Lagoon, the city of sand and wind and white veils. They call Varzane the gem of eastern Isfahan because of its abundant ancient treasures. Varzane is the capital of Bon Rude district. It's situated 150 kilometers southeast of the city of Isfahan. A trench used to enclose the city in ancient times, but in recent decades, the trench has been covered and is used as a street. Pigeon houses, a safe place for pigeons, safe from falcons and owls and ravens, safe from the bellowing local winds, beautiful, organized, and identical nests, all made of clay. Isfahan's pigeon houses are one of a kind with regards to their number, construction, and use. 
Extensive farming in the plains near Esfahan was one of the main reasons for the creation of these houses. This was the best chance that farmers had to use the droppings of birds as fertilizers for their crops. French historian Jean Chardin has mentioned the pigeon houses in his memoirs of a trip to Iran. Chardin, the famous French voyager, visited Iran in the 16th century. In his memoir, he writes, Iran's huge pigeon houses are six times bigger than the biggest of the breeding centers. They build these towers with bricks and cover them with plaster and lime. The interior wall of the tower has holes built to house the pigeons. Iran has the best pigeon houses in the world, and they're all built to access fertilizer. We're on our way to Isfahan, a city which takes up 6% of Iran's entire area, but to its people, it's much bigger than that. The city was called Isfahan in the Sassanid era, in the 6th century. Isfahan's architecture was perfected in the Safavid era, 400 years ago. They call Isfahan a city sister of Florence, St. Petersburg, and Kuala Lumpur. From constructions still standing from the Safavid era, there remain a series of schools, markets, and motels. They are situated near Isfahan's Chahar Bagh Avenue, the world's oldest hotel. It was built during the Safavid era. Good morning, can I help you? Uh, yes, I'm checking in, I have a reservation. Very good, what's your name? Anderson. Uh, let me check it please. Yeah. Uh, from America, that's yes. right? Yeah, I got it. Please take a seat for about two, three minutes so that I prepare the, the list and then you need to sign something, all right? Please. Thank you. This structure was commissioned by Shah Sultan Hussein Safavid and he presented it as a gift to his mother during the era Esfahan was called Half of the World. This motel was renovated and turned into a modern hotel later on. A building with a new look, but an ancient soul. There are only a few hotels around the world that are 130 or 140 years old, none of which compare to the Abbasi Hotel and its old and traditional paintings still intact. For example, the Fujian Hotel in Japan is 110 years old and is still a traditional structure. But Isfahan's Abbasi Hotel is 320 years old. The suites have been decorated in the style of the Safavid and Ghajar era, but are still dreamy, beautiful, and contain an element of religion and history in them. In the middle of the yard, there are one or two story suites situated like platforms and symmetric in front of the patio, a link between outside and inside. It welcomes thousands of guests and visitors from both inside and outside the country. In the past 40 years, more than 150 famous people have stayed in this hotel. The quiet glory of the hotel, along with its tranquil atmosphere, reminds you of the glory of Naqsha Jahan Square.
Naqsh Jahan was commissioned by King Abbas Safavid in the 16th century AD, before Isfahan became the capital of Iran. The square replaced a smaller one which had remained from the Temuri era. In the Safavid era, the Naqsh Jahan garden was one of the biggest polo fields in the world. Two marble walls played the role of goalposts. Facing the square is the Imam Mosque, and behind it, the entrance to the Kayser Market. Sheikh Lotfala is a mosque on the eastern side of the square, patient, calm, and facing the sun. A mixture of stillness and motion, colorful yet without color, in between the sky and the ground, the only mosque in Iran without a courtyard or minaret. Other ancient mosques usually have big courtyards and a minaret or more. Sheikh Lotfala Mosque also has a dome different from others. It's not a big mosque like other mosques. In fact, it has a relatively small prayer room. But the beauty and magnificence of the prayer room is enough for you to get lost in. This mosque is the only one which has stairs right at its door front. King Abbas I had the mosque built in honor of Sheikh Lotfala Jabal Ameli, the Shia clerk who traveled to Iran from Lebanon. It was built for his and his family's prayer services. The mosque's walls, walls with such delicate designs, carry a very heavy dome. There was no choice but to build them so strong and thick, some as thick as two meters. The interior of the dome is designed with stars, colored in gold. Stars that somehow remind you of ivies. The light inside the mosque is astounding. Around the width of the dome, in equal distances, there are holes which have been blocked by windows from both inside and outside. The light that comes through these walls gives the design a magical, almost holy look. When the sun shines into the mosque, the shape of peacock's feathers form on the roof. In the day, the peacock's feathers are spread out, and near the evening, they come together. By controlling the light, the building's architect has been able to attract our attention to every angle of the mosque. One of the things people in Isfahan, and also tourists, do to entertain themselves is riding in carriages around Naqsh Jahan. The carriages are reminders of what up to 50 years ago used to be one of the main means of transportation for the people, but is now only part of a distant memory. During the reign of King Abbas the Great, a small square, which is now part of Naqsh Jahan, was expanded to its current size. Famous historic buildings such as the King's Mosque and Sheikh Lotfala's Mosque, the Ali Ghapu Palace and the Gaysari Gate were built around the square. Many world travelers and tourists believe that Naqsh Jahan is one of the largest squares in the world. Shardan writes of Naqsh Jahan, There are 200 rooms around the square, all the same size and the same style. The rooms on the lower levels each consist of two shops, one facing the square and the other facing the market. The rooms on the upper levels have a terrace facing the square. I think Naqsh Jahan is the most beautiful square in Iran.
In the northern section of the square, there sits an entrance portal with tile works, the entrance portal to the Gaysarie market. The portal was commissioned by King Abbas and designed on a similar one in the Far East. Chardin, the French traveler, writes in his memoirs. On the two sides of the entrance portal to the Gay Sarrié, there are huge platforms. In the past, jewelers and goldsmiths used to do business on these huge platforms. Merchants are extremely respected in the Eastern world, and trading is a profession more stable than most. And the fortune of merchants is more immune to changes. This is Esfahan's pivotal bazaar and has been considered the city's beating heart since ancient times. It's a symbol of a mixture of the socio-economics, politics, culture, and religion in people's lives. In this market, there are shops that have been selling only one kind of product for 400 years. Here you can see one of the main characteristics of Iranian architecture, conjoined space. From one closed space to another, back to back, continuous, and nothing disturbing this continuity. It's as if you never need to leave the long passageways. One of the famous handicrafts of Esfahan is engravings on copper. The artist focuses diligently on each piece, creating detailed designs, sometimes working more than 20 days for one work of art. I'd heard different things about the scientific activities in Iran and the progress Iranian researchers had made in nanotechnology. With the help of a friend, I went to Isfahan's scientific research center. This center provides university graduates with the opportunity to expand their research and to commercialize their achievements. Isfahan's research center was established in 1983 just like any other technological center, in an effort to coordinate the activities of different scientific and technical centers, Hi. universities, Salon. and industries in the province of Isfahan. 
The Charter of the Isfahan Research Center has the following activities as its order of work. To increase national capability in research and technology. Continuing efforts in obtaining current and future needs. And increasing scientific knowledge and helping commercialize the results of research. Okay, thank you. Nice meeting you. And, uh, Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you. And I'll be happy to explain um, about our uh, Isfahan Science and Technology Town. Yeah, can you tell me about this industrial complex? Uh, yes, uh, Isfahan Science and Technology Town is uh, an institution to help uh, small and medium enterprises, small and medium companies, which are knowledge-based, establish their ideas and uh, go through all the different stages of creating uh, an in innovation and establishing a new business and going to the market. So the ba basically the, the main idea of this institution is to help uh, small companies uh, to go through all the different stages from the incubation and then post-incubation and then uh, finally we're going to have a science park which will host these companies and help them grow and uh, hire more, more people and uh, create a new industry in the whole country. Uh, Isfahan Science and Technology Town was uh, established in 1993. The basic idea was created at that time. And then afterwards, uh, in about 2001, the first companies were uh, admitted here. And right now, we are hosting several uh, incubation centers, post-incubation, pre-incubation. And uh, at, at the current time, we have more than 200 90 companies here in different stages of development. Now, uh, if, if I may, I will have to go and I'll ask my friend to take you to, the, to that office. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. What kind of work is done in this complex? Uh, actually, this complex is for the technology incubation in Isfahan Science and Technology Town. So it has started 12 years ago in Isfahan. Uh, we have the uh, nanotechnology group, we have biotechnology groups, we have uh, ICT information technology groups. Uh, that's uh, the environmental, the talented engineer from Isfahan Science, um, Isfahan University of Technology, from Isfahan Technology and other tech universities that like to work in Isfahan. They, they observe by the small companies here and working on the field of the research and development. My expertise is in nanotechnology, but uh, we are developing the, um, uh, our patents and ideas in the field of the biotechnology, means how we improve the industry of the biotechnology with the nanotechnology. Okay, like food and Yeah, it's products. like a food and um, agriculture, agricultural products. This product that you are seeing and something like this as well, is an edible coating and is uh, extracted from the rice and um, honey, uh, ketosan, uh, and the uh, nano sayodo that's okay. so but these combination what it will do it keep the mm, fruits and vegetables fresh longer and it's improved the shelf life but it goes in the industry of the post harvesting means one liter of these mm, used for one ton of citrus one for, ton yeah is okay. so uh, the, the nanotechnology means it's very small but it works very hard ah. Strong. Yeah, this one is very strong. Isfahan's exotic night, with colors and lights and the stars. You can't help but love it. Man-made wonders, under the darkness of the night. It's as if it suddenly becomes difficult to tell the sky and the earth apart. A place you can only feel and watch. A place that cannot be reached and is always on the go.
Chardon said, I am obliged to write this, to say that when you walk around in this city, you can't help but to fall in love. Looking at the different aspects of the city makes your heart beat and you lose control. I'm sure the climate has something to do with the fun-loving nature of the people here. The Vonk Cathedral. It's a church and a museum in Isfahan's Jolfa district. It's a historic church dating back to the Safavid era. Vonk in Armenian means the Grand Church. This church was commissioned in the 16th century by King Abbas II. A mixture of details and entirety which is a key element of Iranian art, can be seen in this church as well. Here you see more seven shade tiles than anywhere else. The main prayer room of the church is parallel shaped. It's made up of two rectangular sections. The first part is the building's courtyard and the second, which is under the dome, is where the church's choir performs.
The Grand Bazaar in Isfahan leads to the Grand Mosque, a mosque which is one of the oldest religious structures in Iran. The discovery of part of a column with decorations which date back to the 6th century AD in the north of the mosque tell us that the structure dates back to before the emergence of Islam. The Grand Mosque is a series of constructions and works of art built in the era after Islam, all built under the order of Iranian kings, ministers, governors, leaders, and women. The constructions show the changes art went through in the years since Islam's arrival in Iran. The mosque is also known as Ancient Grand Mosque and Friday Mosque. It's situated in the old section of Isfahan and is one of the most significant architectural gems in Iran and the world. And since the different parts of the structure were built in different eras, the current building is like a huge museum, showcasing changes in the style of Iranian architecture. Every part of this construction was built in a different era. They've been adding and taking away from this structure for 2,000 years. And the last time, the last time it was renovated was after the consecutive bombings of Isfahan during the Iraq-Iran War. Dr. Arthur, an archaeologist, writes, when I went to see Esfahan's Grand Mosque and stood under its dome, I realized that I had been completely overwhelmed. Because under this dome, you can realize the everlasting masterpiece and creativity of Iranians and realize the beauty of the mosque and the dome. I've gone to the mosque and seen it many times since then. I've talked a great deal about its beauty and seen myself falling in love with Isfahan and Iran more and more every day. Hi. Hi. Most welcome to Iran and Isfahan. Thank you. Where are you from? I'm from New York. I'm the local guide of uh, Isfahan and this mosque. May I help you? Um, yeah, what's the story about this place? Well, actually, this part is uh, known as Oljaitu Prayer Nietzsche and uh, the Mongolian part of the Jama Mosque of Isfah. It was built in early 14th century, exactly 1310 AD, by the order of uh, Oljaitu, the Mongolian ruler, as I told you, and is considered as the most uh, beautiful. Uh, uh, plus of work among the Jami Mosque in Iran. Uh, some parts uh, you see calligraphies, in different written cuneiform calligraphies and so on, and sometimes uh, some parts very beautiful uh, stock of works, different and parts. What does the calligraphy mean? Uh, well, uh, in some parts in the, under the arch, the name of a minister and also the ruler of uh, Mongolia, Sultan Muhammad, the ruler, uh, and also Muhammad Asavi, the minister, Iranian minister of them, and also the date which it was built, uh, which is uh, 710 uh, in lunar calendar, Islamic lunar calendar, all 1310 AD. Looking carefully at the uh, prayer Nietzsche and on the pulpit, mm -hmm. which is very good, uh, very fine uh, woodwork, in the big star, you can see similar uh, uh, shape in it, wow. which was the same, they, they spec uh, to the same time and carved on wood. But uh, 700 years ago, this pulpit, of course, a Safavid one, early 17th century. Wow, thank you so much for your information. You're welcome. If you need uh, more information, also, uh, the series. Thank you.
Royan is a research center for fertility. It was established in 1991 as a surgery institute by Dr. Saeed Kazami Ashiani. But later, a lot of important research on stem cells was conducted here. This institute is part of the Royan Institute uh, and in Tehran, the main institute is in Tehran and it's made of three centers or three mm -hmm. uh, research centers. The biomedicine which we do in fertility work and then we have the stem cell, cell center which we do research on stem cells and then we have the biotechnology which is cited in Esfahan and it was founded about five years ago. This is a new building we just moved around about two months ago to this mm -hmm. building and uh, so we do one of the main things that we do here is cloning where we are hoping to produce genetically engineered animals in which we can uh, produce uh, drugs in their milk so that one day we can use their milk as a, to produce medicine for people and so far there is only one medicine in the world which is produced from the milk of the Goat. Mm -hmm. So let's have a look at what we do. Which um, animals do you use? We use goat here. Uh -huh. We are we're working on goat mainly. We have established our work on goat. Okay, you can see here the oocytes. Okay. And then you can see we are enucleating, taking the nucleus off. When we shine UV. That's the nucleus right yes, there. Yes, okay. this is. Now the next step is to, uh, uh, to add the cell to the uh, to this thing we call cell attachment. You can see the enucleated oocyte, and then we have we can see few cells here. Uh, slowly we bring it, and just by a slight touch, the cells get attached to our oocyte. Mm -hmm. So now we have a cell attached to our oocyte. Now we have to do fusion, and here you can see that we, the oocyte is fused. We have modified our system and. Uh, um, our initial system was the original, the orthodox system used in the whole world. Now we have tried to make our system very efficient and now even we have made it handmade. You can use it on ordinary microscope which is very uh, user friendly and you can do it in many uh, labs. So this technology was set up here and we, this is the research we do. Wow, so they're doing that right now? They, yes, they are working on this. What we can do the cells which we are using uh, to attach to our oocyte, we can manipulate it genetically and therefore our animals when born are genetically manipulated or they are genetically engineered animals. Okay, what kind of changes do you make? For example, we have, a, if we want to make a drug, like say, I just name insulin because it's very well known. So we can use the insulin gene and put it Near, uh, beside a gene which is expressed or produced in only in milk. So when the animal produces milk, it also produces insulin. Okay. But our aim is not insulin, we are working on different proteins and therefore we can use uh, any proteins that we want, we might be able to make it in the milk. We hope to be able to, by providing this service to the people, we hope to help the people health with mm -hmm. this sort of Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. Very exciting. Menar Jonban, situated six kilometers west of Esfahan, 
on the road from Isfahan to Najaf Abad. It's been 700 years since its construction, and it's been standing tall. So tall, you think you could move it. It was built with a unique design, and it's still the only swinging minaret in the world. Minarjan Ban is in fact a resting place, the resting place of a mystic named Abdullah Karla Dani. They say it was built 700 years ago during the Mongol Ilkhanian era. It was a single patio, and then during the Safavid era, around 400 years ago, they added two minarets on the two sides. The design of the minaret has Safavid art written all over it. The fame of this small construction is because it swings. It is only nine meters wide, and each minaret is more than 17 meters long. If you swing one of the minarets, the other one, and also the entire building, swings. A simple greeting is enough for them to invite you to their house, and they treat you as if you've known each other for years. I accepted Paria's invitation to dinner and went to their house. I'd met her at Royan Institute. Chardon wrote, they put some butter in a pot, then they add a layer of rice on the butter, about an inch of rice. Then they chop onions on the rice, then fried, chopped almonds and dried raisins. The rice is always delicious, no matter how it's cooked. Iranians have a knack in frying nuts and the seeds of fruits. The life of Iranians, a mixture of participation and hospitality, is truly interesting to me. We're going to Naim, a small city, but an ancient one. It's a suburb of Esfahan in the Kavir Desert, with a desert climate. This mosque is one of Iran's most ancient mosques and includes a courtyard and a huge altar on three sides.
Pyrnia's ancient house is a perfect example of the architecture of houses in the central desert of Iran. A house dating back 400 years to the Safavid era. It's a pleasure for us to welcome you visiting Kabir Ethnographic Museum of Nain. Thank you. This is a lovely house and uh, dates back to 16th century and consists of several parts. Spring part is here, summer part is down here, fall and autumn are there, winter part is on the other side and the garden is as a picnic area in the house. But in the beginning you see that here is a room with some kind of jars which they have been used for keeping grain, wheat and barley. And at the bottom of the jar, there are some little holes for taking wheat and grain out. So this uh, is about this room. Okay. And then you can have a look at this painting of miniature, which means that here we have different stories. In the beginning, on the left side, this is the story of Lady Amazu. The second one is about the um, Horso and Shirin. On the corner of this side, if you come here and look at that, you see the story of Joseph and Zuleikha. So Leha is sitting up there and Joseph is at the middle of the picture. You see some basket of orange which was distributed between the group. And finally at the end there are some girls and ladies who when they saw Joseph, they cut their hands and finger. On the other side you see that the story are about hunting uh, animals and hunting scenes. In the corner we have uh, angels, trees and flowers. And between them we have a lattice window which has been built re uh, recently. And on the other side, we have a story of life and nature and lion and animals. This trip to Esfahan was a true adventure. My first-hand experience in Iran was more magical than anything I had imagined. The city and its people have a spirit that I won't forget. <laughs>